told you before, boys, Mr. Capone lives next door. <laughs> Squeeze in. <laughs> oh, certainly. Oh. Room for a little one, is there? <laughs> 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 all right, all aboard. <laughs> Take it away, Charlie. Right. Comparing diesel to steam is like comparing Twiggy to Mae West. <laughs> really? Yeah, I do them all, you know. Shunting. Yeah. Ba ding 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 bing bing ding 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 ding. Ba ding 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 ba ding bing bing ding 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 ding. Very good. Very good. You close your eyes, you're there. Yeah, now look. Train going over points, all right? Giddly dee, giddly dee. Go on, close your eyes. We are off train going under a bridge at 60 miles an hour, right? Giddly dee, giddly dee, giddly dee, giddly dee, giddly dee, giddly dee. It's good, isn't it, eh? Here, remember this one. First piece, ching. On a train? <laughs> well, now we're being silly, aren't we? <laughs> Bus conductor. You know, separate tickets in the older. Ticket in the in the machine, you know, in the clipper. Ching! Ah, uh, yes, uh, a bit before my time. Ha, <laughs> ha, Lee Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> Put that light out! <laughs> this is Fump speaking. <laughs> Charmony calling. Charmony calling. Hey, hey, hey. Then there was old Nasty himself. Kiss out! Kiss out, Fifi! He didn't quit and touch and didn't! Good afternoon! Kiss out of Cruz Blue! I swear I've had telephone! A German station announcer. <laughs> That's very good. They broke the mold when they made you, didn't they, eh? <laughs> old Man River. <laughs> He must know something, but don't say nothing. He just keeps rolling. He just keeps rolling along. Paul Routon, showboat. <laughs> you like transport, don't you? Oh, do them all. Do them all. A handbag. Uh, sorry, I, I, I... I'll do it again for you. A handbag. <laughs> Lady Cracknell. Importance of being earnest. Oscar Wilde. He may have been a bit of a Jesse, but he could write like a good one. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lighthouse. Oh. <laughs> Here's a good one. I've had a terrible cold lately. <laughs> Uh, I really must be going. What train? Doncaster. Late. Points blew up at Peterborough. Hit! 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 Better with two spoons, though. Needs must when the devil drives. Of course. <sighs> <laughs> we are not amused. 
Brown. We are not amused. We were only saying to John Brown early this morning, we are not amused by the decline in the manners and courtesy of our subjects. Their conduct is most unseemly. <laughs> that is exactly what we are referring to. How dare you rise before your sovereign gives you leave to do so. Be seated, sir. You are stark raving mad. You should be locked up. Sit down. <laughs> we are about to board our train and would command you to show due deference as we do so. You've got this straight, haven't you? Yes, Dad. Well, we've got to cop this hundred acre prize, right? Right, Dad. Right. <laughs> now, my line will be the one with this big red float on it. Yeah. You know, I'm clever, Dad. Just runs in the family, son. Runs in the family. Yeah. Now, there's the money. Dad. Now, off you go, down to the fish butlers. Right, Dad. Give me that, you little twit. I need that. Ah, oh, bless you. <laughs> morning. Morning. Good morning. How do you? Ah, quite a nice day for fishing, isn't it? That's good. That is. Very good. <laughs> Every little helps. Oh, I've got a big one. Oh, God blimey, it's lively. Oh, this is a winner. This is a winner. <laughs> <laughs> It's unprecedented, I must admit, but life is unusual. Yes, it, yes, it's unusual. Life is, I don't know. <laughs> Just a bit of fellas, no, you can't do that. No, just a bit. Ah! <laughs> Dad, I think I got it wrong again. <laughs> Yes, my job. 
This is Raymond, one of my teaching colleagues oh. from school. <laughs> Hello, young man. So you're Clarissa's young friend. Yes, sir. How do you do, sir? Oh, how do you do? Do sit down. We're just about to have some tea. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> I gather that Tom, you teach English at St. Gregory's. Yes, that's correct, sir. Jolly good. <laughs> Thank you, my dear. Well, I expect you'd like something to eat. <laughs> What's in that dish there? Crumpet, sir. <laughs> Beg your pardon. I said crumpet, sir. A word in your ear. I would appreciate it if you wouldn't use such language in front of my daughter. But, sir, I only said crumpets. Only? Perhaps you're unaware that the word has prurient connotations. But it's the normal name for, for, for crumpets. Not in this house. My daughter Clarissa is as pure in mind as she is in body. <laughs> it is my intention that she remain so. The word in this house for those comestibles is dibble. Dibble. A word of my own contrivance. But, sir, surely you know that dibble is a slang word. For... Enough said. Please come and sit down. <laughs> <coughs> a dibble, Raymond. Oh, thank you, sir. <laughs> Tea, Daddy? Thank you, my dear. Mmm. Excellent, uh, dibbles, Clarissa. <laughs> And followed, if my eyes don't deceive me, by minced tarts. <laughs> Are you having a joke with me, young man? No, no, sir, of course not. There's nothing wrong with saying minced. <laughs> the word in this house is placket. Minced placket. But, sir, placket is an 18th century word. Let us say no more. Kindly watch your language in future. Yes, sir. I, 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 I'm, I, I'm so sorry, sir. <laughs> Have a mince a placket, Raymond. Oh, thank you, sir. They look almost as good as the dibbles. Yes, dear boy? Oh, well, uh, I was just admiring the room. Yes, it is pleasant, isn't it? Uh, my daughter... Clarissa has made it most attractive since we've been here. Oh, very nice. Well done, Clarissa. <laughs> That's a lovely big chest you've got. <laughs> the word is fizzle. <laughs> yes, it is a lovely old oak fizzle, isn't it? <laughs> Terry, sorry, sir. I can't apologize enough. Tell the silly old I keep coming out with these awful boobs. <laughs> Strunts! Strunts! <laughs> well, uh, no doubt you'll be wanting to get back to the school to uh, catch up on some of your markings, perhaps. <laughs> uh, no, sir, I'm not going back to the school this evening. I've decided to have it off with Clarissa. <laughs> Clarissa, go, go and, uh, go and make some more tea at once. What are you trying to do? What is the purpose of these disgusting innuendos? But, sir, honestly, I... Is it an truly, attempt to I... pervert and corrupt my daughter with modern filth? No, sir, of course not. I wouldn't dream of it. I mean, ever since you've been in this house, you've been using the most absolutely appalling language. No, I, I haven't, sir, truly. No, no, it's those words you've been using, sir. They're far worse. From Earth, do you mean? Well, sir, I... I... <clears throat> I've made a bit of a study of 17th and 18th century slang, sir. Yeah, um, and, well, um, <clears throat> dibble, for instance, means... Blanket <laughs> 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 is an 18th century word for... <laughs> Whereas, pizzle is slang for... <laughs> What about strunts? Ah, uh, no, strunt, according to every authority I've ever come across, is an exceedingly vulgar word for... <laughs> Young man, this is a vicarage, not a barrack room. I am appalled, yes, appalled by your language. No, it's not my language, sir, honestly. I brought some more dibbles. Oh, not you too, Clarissa, dear. Oh, it's more than the human frame can bear. Go and wash your mouth out before it gets polluted forever. Daddy, a 
Dibble? I know what a Dibble is, thank you. And I hope and pray that you at least will never find out. Well, not until you're married. <laughs> <laughs> Filthy obscenity. Obscenity? But, but it wasn't obscene two minutes ago. But it is now. I'm utterly shocked at the language that young people use these days. Have you no decency, no, no decorum? <laughs> oh, the strain is too much. I shall have to... I shall have to go and lie down. <laughs> I'm so sorry about Daddy Raymond. He does sometimes get rather upset. <laughs> but when you get to know him, you know he's... Really quite an amiable old sod. Good morning. Good morning. Mr. Roberts? That's right. I'm the examiner for your driving test, so let's start straight away with the eye test. Uh, can you tell me the uh, number of that car over there? <laughs> what car? <laughs> By the office block. What office block? <laughs> Is there something wrong with your eyes? <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> oh, 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 there you are. I didn't see you standing there. <laughs> Shouldn't you be wearing glasses? Oh, I had a pair once. I put them down somewhere. I haven't been able to find them since. <laughs> Such bad eyesight. How do you manage in your driving lessons? Oh, quite well, considering. Of my 42 accidents, only 36 involved serious injury. <laughs> How many lessons did you have? Oh, just the one. <laughs> My instructor must have thought I was quite good because he told me not to bother taking any more lessons with me. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mr. Roberts, but I've got some bad news for you. Really? What's that? I'm afraid I must fail you. Your eyesight is so bad you'll be in obvious danger to other road users. Oh, dear. That means I'll be the only brain surgeon at the hospital without a car. <laughs> Second Lieutenant Ponsonby reporting for duty, sir. Ah, uh, yes. Stand easy. Ponsonby. I believe I knew your sister, Penelope. How is she? In bed with Cramp at present, sir. Oh, would that be young Cramp of the household cabaret? <laughs> oh, never mind. No, sir. Oh, my dear chap, loosen up a bit and stop saluting all the time. You might hurt someone. We don't go in for much formality in the regiment. <laughs> What's your first name? My name's Freddie. Uh, Timothy, sir. Freddy. <laughs> That's more like it. Now, come along. I'll introduce you to the CEO. His name's Peter. <laughs> Freddy, could I ask you something? Certainly, Timothy. What do you call your privates? Tom, Dick and Harry. What do you call yours? <laughs> Mrs. Jones, isn't it? Yes. Ah. Do take a seat, William. Oh, thank you. Um, this is your, uh... <laughs> first time, is it? Yes. Oh, excuse me a moment. Hello. Oh, blimey, not you again. How many times have I told you not to ring me up at work, you stupid old bag? <laughs> I'll shout if I want to! What? Oh, you will, will you? <laughs> well, you just try. <laughs> Up yours as well! <laughs> well, you do, and I'll tell everybody how you got that splinter in your backside. <laughs> well, go back to your flaming mother, then! <laughs> Bitch! <laughs> now, you were saying? That wasn't your wife on the telephone, was it? Yes, that was the little lady, yes. Oh, excuse me once again. <laughs> you don't seem to get on too well together. Well, I mean, how can I, as a marriage guidance counsellor, hope to solve any of your problems if I don't have the odd little tiff now and again? <laughs> I never thought about it that way. That's right. So, uh, what's your problem? Ah, well, uh, we, uh, Millie and I, we're considering a divorce. You see, I don't love her anymore. <laughs> Well, she's, 
Uh, she's not up to much, is she? I mean, there's not much chance of you being unfaithful, is there? Except when it's foggy. Pardon? Well, I mean... She's a... She's a bit off, isn't she? A bit Gorgonzola. God, what a mess. Do you mean to say that you walked here with that on your arm through the streets in broad daylight? Why not? They say chivalry's dead. See, it's not all that bad. Oh, not if you're going for the warthog look, no. This is my wife you're talking about. Yeah. Excuse me, ma'am. <laughs> oh, that's better. You were saying, you bounder. <laughs> now look what you've done. You started to cry. Well, don't worry. When the tears see that fizz up, they'll probably turn back. <laughs> I've a good mind to punch you on the nose. I tell you what, why don't you really make me suffer? Why don't you get her to strip off? <laughs> right, now you ask for these... Oh! <laughs> Come on, Millie. Oh, Percy. You defended my honour. Yes, I did. That must mean you still love me. Yes, I suppose it does. Kiss. Kiss. <laughs> 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 Next. Tights here, best quality, 20p. 20p only for these marvellous ladies' tights. Ladies' tights, 20p a pair. Ladies' tights, 20p a pair. Bargain offer, 18p a pair for these lovely ladies' tights. Here, here. Ladies and gentlemen, 15p. 18p a pair only. Here, 15p a pair. Ladies' tights, 15p a pair. Sacrificial yeah. offer. 12p for these beautiful ladies' tights. 12p only for ladies' tights. 10p, ladies' tights. 10p a pair, ladies' tights. 8p a pair for these lovely ladies' tights. An absolute bargain. Fabulous ladies' tights. 8p only for these ladies' tights. 4p. 4p a pair, ladies' tights. Yeah, 4p a pair. You've done me, lad. Yeah? 4p a pair, I'll come be there. How many pair you got there? 50? Yeah, that's right. Here you are, then. Let's have them. Hey, I've sold out. Yeah, you are there, ain't you? Yeah. Ladies tights, 20p a pair. It's lovely ladies tights, 20p a pair. Come on, ladies, that's all I'm asking. 20p, they're micro-mix. Hey, Dad, I've got it wrong again. You'll find they're well worth the money. There you are. 
It must be some months since I've been down in your basement, Bert. And I'm curious to know what you have done with it this time. Well, have a look for yourself, Walt. I think it's fairly obvious. You've led it to the corporation for a rubbish dump. <laughs> I have turned it into a film studio. My word, Bert. If you are going to make films, then that Alf Alfred Hotchkick will have to look up his laurels, won't oh, he? Perceptibly <laughs> observed, old friend. No, I intend to lead a crusade against the tide of blue, pornographic, dirty films while he's sweeping the country. That is quite commendable, Bert. Yeah. I might add, I have seen hundreds of them, and each one is worse than the last. You are to be congratulated, Wall. You must have seen nearly as many as that Lord Longford. Uh, tell me, how many great picture films have you on your schedule this year, sir? Well, I've, uh, I've got uh, one or two epics in the scenario stage. For instance, there's a, a four-hour biblical mammoth that I intend to start shooting next Saturday afternoon. And when will that be completed? Sunday afternoon. <laughs> Guess who's going to be my leading man? Uh, don't tell me. Charlton Heston. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> yes, I did consider it. But on reflection, he's got one big drawback. Uh, what's that, Bert? He's too tall for the costumes. <laughs> oh, then who is going to be the fortunate performer? Why, you are, my old lad. <laughs> I am deeply and sincerely flattered, Bert. Uh -huh. And as it is a biblical picture, I shall inform the Yealing Herald that Sophia Loren and I are just good friends. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're not going to be one of them temperamental stars. Oh, oh. I see you have lots and lots of equipment in your studio, Bert. Yes, I wondered when you were going to notice it. Come over here and I'll show you the camera. There we are. Made with these two hands, naturally. I wouldn't have thought otherwise. <laughs> I see it is made of wood. True, but electrically operated. I think I can safely say that that's the only camera in the world that is run on a food mixer. <laughs> I'll show you how it works. He bird. Yeah. No, I'm focusing. Hang on, I'm trying to focus. Bert. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Oh. oh, it's a lovely clear picture now. Oh, there's only one problem. I seem to run out of film. <laughs> yes, you have, Bert. It's all run out on the floor. I didn't bring you down here to criticise, you know. I beg your pardon, Bert. Granted, old friend. Now, here you will see the essence of my intentions. Think clean, no filth. And quite right, too. Now, in my next picture, I intend to embody the awesome schoolboy story with the magic of science fiction and the excitement of the Western. And what are you going to call it, Bert? Billy Bunter meets kindly sexless monster at the OK Corral. <laughs> oh, I suppose that is the Western Saloon bar there. Yes, this is where we're going we're to have the big fight, yeah? And these are the bottles they hit each other over the head with. But they are milk bottles, Bert. I won't have any boozing in my films, lad. Of course, these, uh, these bottles are not real, you know. They don't hurt. Look, I'll show you. <laughs> That's amazing, that is. Yes. Oh. Go on, you have a go. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, well. That must be the one I brought down for our tea. <laughs> now, let me show you another bit of mo movie magic. Have you ever wondered when we shoot a man how the blood pours out and it's not, it doesn't seem to hurt him? Yes, I do find that extremely mystifying, Bert. Well, now, I'll show you how it works, Walt. Well, take off your coat, lad. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. Now slip that in your shirt pocket now. There we are. Right? Yes. <laughs> now, when I say action, I want you to go like this. Oh! Like that, right? Like this! Ah! Ah! <laughs> oh, yes, that's very clever, that is. You're bleeding to death and I haven't shot you yet. <laughs> Come on, let's have a shootout. When I count to three, you fight. <laughs> Hey, Bert, yeah? if it's all the same to you, I'd like to be John Wayne. Well, it's not all the same to me. These are my guns and I want to be John Wayne. <laughs> you can be Bert Lancaster. Right, I like Bert Lancaster. All right, all right, then be John Wayne, only let's get on with it. Now, when I count to three, you ready? Yes. One, two... Uh, 
I see the Carters have got their new deep freeze. <laughs> By the way, I haven't shown you the uh, special effects department, have I? No, you haven't, Bert. Ah, well, come over here, lad. <coughs> <laughs> now, this is where I intend to shoot the remake of Nanook of the North. You haven't had your screen test yet, have you? No, Bert. Well, go behind that iceberg there and I'll get the equipment out, all right? Now, just get this machine into position here. Yeah? <laughs> you're not going to fire any guns yet, are you, Bert? No, I'm not going to fire any guns, just a blizzard. Now, <laughs> uh, well, I'm just getting the wind machine ready and getting the snow ready. Oh, now, Bert. when I say action, I want you to come out. When you start acting, remember it's 30 below and you're facing a false 10. Right, I'll just wind it up. Right, you ready? Yes. Right, action. 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 I told you, no filth. <laughs> if you want to make sexy films, you go to another studio. Oh, I'm sorry, Bert. All right. Here. Put this on. I don't want any flashing in my studio. <laughs> there you are. Give us the goggles. There you are. Put your arm through. Yes. Put your arm through there? Yes. That's right. That's right. No, uh, that's not bad. Hang on a moment. <laughs> yes, that's very good. It's marvellous, that is. Hang on a moment. <laughs> I'm going to have you in my next epic. Yes, and I shall be pleased to accept that, so long as you don't shoot me in the blizzard. No, 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 lad. <laughs> this is a classic. This is about the face that launched a thousand ships. Helen of Troy. It sounds fascinating, Bert. What will you call it? If at first you don't succeed, Troy, Troy again. <laughs> I see you have developed a hair trigger sense of humor, Bert. <laughs> that was not meant to be funny. Sorry, Bert. Well, now, as you've got the costume on, we may as well start filming, eh? Yes. You get rid of that snow machine, and I'll go and fetch it. Fetch what, Bert? You'll soon see, lad. You'll soon see. Bert. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> My God, Bert, what is it? <laughs> that is the Trojan horse, lad. I'm going to use that in the climax of my film. There's a door at the back and a hundred soldiers come out. How are you going to do that, Bert? It'll be you coming out a hundred times wearing a different hat. <laughs> Just think of it, Bert. There's this Trojan horse outside the gates of Troy. It's dawn. And there's a sound of a dif distant bugle. Hang on. about the horse, Bert. Was it the music made him do that? No, it was my fault, actually. I was saving this to blow down the walls of Jericho. <laughs> Never mind. Come up to the attic. I want you to see a cartoon film what I'm painting. Hey. 